Hey guys, so whether you're looking to buy your first paintbrushes or looking to replace the ones you have, either because you're looking to upgrade or because they are trashed or somebody's eaten it. Yeah, I'm looking at you. So whether you go online or you go walk into an art supply shop, you'll be met by literally hundreds and hundreds of different paintbrushes. All of them different sizes, different shapes, different types, made of different things. Where do you even start when it comes to finding the right one? Well, I've got five key things for you to think about to help you find the right paintbrush for what you want to do. So, let's take a look. Okay, point number one. The first thing to think about is the anatomy of the paintbrush. So what I mean is that the humble paintbrush is made up of different components. So therefore knowing what the components of a paintbrush are is really gonna help you to find the one that's right for you. So whilst I'm using quite a big brush for the example, at least you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. So first things first is the handle. If you're looking online or in a shop, then you'll see some of the brushes have massive long handles. The reason is that these brushes are designed to be used on a canvas and the artist holds it much further down, down the handle and can then paint much more and move, move the paint around the canvas like so. For the most part for miniature modeling, you're gonna get one with a much smaller handle because you're doing much smaller pieces. The second point on the handles is that it's the shape of the handle. This is a standard round belly handle and you see it's got the bulge in the, in the middle when you're gripping it and it tapers off so it sits nicely, so it sits nicely into your hand. But there's different shapes, different styles. So for example, this is a much smaller brush. It has the same round body, same tapered off. And you normally often hold it over the, the, uh, the bulgy part, belly of the, of the handle there. However, some people prefer to hold it further back. Some people prefer to hold it on the belly there. And some people prefer to hold it right down on the metal part here. However, what some people find is that if they're holding a, especially a small brush in a pinch grip like this for a long period of time, especially if they're trying to do tiny little details, it can make their fingers kind of cramp up like crazy. So one thing you could try is a different shaped handle. Now this, as you see here, has kind of got almost like a triangular profile there, okay, slightly thicker. Still sits in the hand really nicely, but because it's more triangular, you're not pinching quite as hard, and some people feel that it gives them more control, and it's a lot more comfortable. Nah, it's down to personal preference, but that is an option for you to think about. Okay, so we've got the handle, what's next? This next part here is called the ferrule. Now this is a really important part of the paintbrush. It's either glued or crimped onto the handle, as you can see there. And the shape of the ferrule is what determines the shape of the brush, the shape of the bristles. So as you can see in this one here, it's flared out in this angle here, which gives the brush a quite a wide profile there. Turn it onto its side, it's then crimped down like so, so therefore makes it much thinner in this profile. Now, down to the business end. So this area here, okay, is known as the head of the brush. So obviously you have the bristles here, and I'll go into the bristles in a bit more detail in a minute. This part where it comes out of the ferrule, where the bristles go into the ferrule, it's called the heel of the brush. The middle part is known as the belly of the brush. This part is really, really important. The belly of the brush acts as a paint reservoir. So if I bring in these two brushes here, so for example, this brush here has a much wider belly than this one here. So the paint will take longer to dry on the brush and it will hold more paint in this one than this one here. So this one you'll be able to work for longer without having to load it quite as much. Therefore you see quite a lot of very high level painters really advocating a really fat belly with a, and as long as it comes down to a really sharp point then you can do the, some whatever detail you would normally do with a much smaller brush but with a much bigger brush as it holds more paint. So coming back to this brush here. so. Uh, so we've now got the heel of the brush, we've got the, the belly of the brush, and this part here, now it doesn't matter what shape it is, this is known as a toe of the brush, more commonly known as a tip of the brush. So, what's next? Point two. Point two is a type of bristle. Now, you may think a bristle is a bristle, right? Well, within the world of art brushes, there's three main types, but the type of bristle is probably the single biggest factor when it comes to how much the brush is gonna cost. The first is what is known as a natural hair or a bristle brush. This is often made of ox or hog hair. Now it's very normally very pale in color, so the brushes you'll see have very, very pale bristles. Now, because it's hair, it's hollow. Therefore, that means that it will suck up and hold a lot of paint. However, the 
tip, the toe of a bristle brush is cut into like a V rather than coming to a sharp point. Now, this means that when it's laying the paint on, especially with thicker paints, that it will leave little lines in the paint. The second type is a soft hair or the soft bristle. Now, this tends to be the most expensive. They're made out of hair from a mongoose or from a marten or from the tips of the tail of a sable. Now, the most common one you'll see is the Kalinsky sable. Now, these will hold their point beautifully. Um, they're very smooth, very soft, very silky, and they are beautiful when it comes to doing detailed work. But yeah, they are the most expensive. The third type is a synthetic bristle. Now this is made out of nylon or polyester and it therefore is the, usually the cheapest out of all the brushes you can get. These tend to be the workhorses of your collection. However, they can be more prone to splitting and they don't hold their point quite as well. Now there are advantages to these. Now because of what they're made of, they can be easier to clean. They are more tolerable when it comes to using caustic paints or really aggressive solvents. The third point is brush shape. Now when you go online or walk into a shop, there'll be all different types of shapes and styles and everything else. I'm not going to go into this today, I'm going to do that in a, in a video coming up soon. The most important thing to recognise though is that the shape of the brush will determine its job. So different brushes are shaped differently to do different jobs. So in, so in other words, identify the job you want the brush to do, then find the corresponding shape to help deliver that. Simple. The fourth point to think about is the characteristics of the brush. fifth point to think about is the feel of the brush. Now I admit this is going to be more difficult when you're buying online. There's going to be an element of trial and error. However, if you're buying in a shop, then just hold the brush. How does it feel in your hand? Think about the balance, the weight. Is the grip comfortable? You're going to be using this for a long time and using it, potentially using it a lot. Therefore, it can be worth investing in a brush that really feels good and is a pleasure to use. At the end of the day, we're painting for fun. So hopefully that's given you some things to think about when you're choosing your next brush. If you learned something new or found something interesting in this video, please give it a thumbs up. I'll see you next time as you watch these videos as we explore the world of miniature modeling. So take care, see you later.